good afternoon everyone and uh, firstly thanks for nalcon and for having us here uh, it's a pleasure to moderate this panel uh, called pam maturity from zero trust to least privilege so the way we have structured uh, the discussion is we first will first start with uh, the pam then we'll talk about uh, zero trust and then slowly we'll move towards uh, least privilege uh, so my first question to uh, let's say charanji to you would be what is pam for a ciso and what have you used it for in let's say your current or previous organizations thank you ajay <clears throat> so very apt question for today's session we we'll start with uh, the privilege access management so as we know privileges are the most important access management criteria in an organization and uh, mostly these are kind of the keys to the organization score security so these are being used mostly by the system administrators dev uh, dev uh, developers and key uh, uh, operations people who are using it now privilege access management is a key thing for the business and uh, this is one of the core factors wherein cyber security plays a, core, a key role here uh, privilege access management has to be uh, defined within the organization so whenever it uh, when you when you go for it there is a change or cultural change which is required within the organization you need to have a management buy in and you need to explain the approach the way the culture will differ uh, from uh, from the way, uh, from the point uh, the implementation uh, starts rolling out so you need to train your people uh, the key people who will be part of uh, the pam process you need to ensure that they are fully trained fully equipped they are accustomed attuned uh, sops have to be created because there are this is a very big topic and a lot of things come into the picture you need to cover the entire it infrastructure landscape be it on prem on cloud hybrid environment wherever you are you can cover the it ot part also now the devops kubernetes etc so all the paradigms of of the world and the emerging uh, evolving uh, cyber security risks uh, you can take care of uh, using the privilege access management as a uh, solution thanks sanjeet uh, you want to add something to it yeah that's a very uh, uh, interesting point which i wanted to uh, say before i answer the question uh verizon's uh, data breach report says that uh, of all the credentials which have been compromised 61% of the credentials were privileged credentials i mean that's a whopping number because they, we have seen there's another report from checkpoint which says that um, the attack on the corporate networks the last year is 50% more than the previous year so that brings me to the point maybe i will ask a question to the audience maybe uh how many of you actually use spam in your organization okay roughly around about 20% okay so i'll tell you why i asked this question because um spam is the privilege access management solution is like your black box only thing is it doesn't comes in orange color but yes uh it's your black box because people focus on your perimeter people focus on the end point but what happens to access to your servers which is being routed by a pam so to answer your question yes it's a very crucial component for the organization it's a very crucial thing that needs to be managed and uh, one of the uh, interesting topics that's one of the reason why i agreed to you know even to participate in this because i have not seen any of the conferences uh, somebody talking about a privilege access management and zero trust security i don't know whether any of you have heard about it so that's one of a very unique topic and very important topic which uh, you know i would like to share my experiences in charanjit well and from a product point of view from ajay also that's my answer sir thank you uh, charanjit and bala so uh, very interesting points raised by charanjit and bala one uh, the number of data breach reports that you see here all kinds of breaches like he mentioned some reports say 61% some reports say uh, 74% some reports say 80% but if you see the 
number one uh, um, you know i would say parameter due to which these breaches happen is the privilege access and privileges uh, so yes definitely important and then yes a lot of aspects that you can definitely cover so uh, i want to move on to the zero trust part so how does pam address the zero trust model we, we talk about the zero trust model so does pam address the zero trust model and how does it do definitely <clears throat> so zero trust is uh, the core i will say uh, wherein uh, the pam is focusing on so zero trust means uh, uh, don't trust anyone blindly so there is no trust for everyone uh, anywhere uh, anyone who is trying to access uh, this kind of solution so person who is trying to access it first need to prove his authenticity whether he is a genuine user and whether he has been granted privileges or not and that uh, can be done using multiple ways now there are a risk based approach uh, which are coming in so which take uh, which take care of not only the identities uh, which are getting authenticated but also the device through which uh, the user is making a connection or a session uh, for how much time the session is uh, being done those things are being logged recorded reported uh, all uh, change management process are being fo uh, followed in in case of any suspicious thing or if we have set anything on the organization policy like uh, something like uh, antivirus uh, updates or patches if they are not missing uh, which is forming a baseline for the organization policy in that case it will lay, uh, it will raise an anomaly and it will uh, come into the picture and based on uh, the process which is being defined either you allow it you deny it or you isolate that particular system or the user for the time being this happens so this is the complete overview of the zero trust architecture uh, on which the pam is working nowadays so uh, my take of uh, you know on this particular topic is slightly even more grounded because uh, uh, we are uh, merging two different uh, complex uh, things here one is a privilege access management then we are talking about zero trust so typically you know i look at uh, things as visibility control and monitor you know first i need to have visibility i need to uh, then deploy the uh, controls then i need to continuously monitor so that part of it is my typical operations but when i come to zero trust you know it talks about the device it talks about the person it talks about the the resource the application the port number these kind of things so if i'm going to do a 3 by 3 matrix and see what is that and how much i have to score it has to be a checkbox in all these nine boxes and uh, i need to you know have visibility control and monitor plus i need to look at the device i need to look at the people i need also need to look at the resource which the person is going to uh, look into it uh, zero trust is a concept i mean how uh, things are going to be defined how things are going to be addressed in an organization depends on how much of other solution they already have to complement this so just because you're going to have a pam is not going to ensure that you're going to escape or avoid any kind of an attack because there are prerequisites for a pam to be uh, done so while these are concepts there are prerequisites and there are uh, approaches strategies to be implemented uh, you know effectively for any solution to work in this case it's a pam so definitely there's a as uh, sharno was rightly mentioning there the, the environment the the dependencies if these are going to be captured if we know uh, you know very simple for us iso it's a it's a sum of risk and sum of controls right that's what we look at so it is not one risk or one individual control is going to protect the organization it's going to be the sum of risk and the sum of control so pam plays a very important role and definitely with zero trust i think that will be a killer combination great so uh, <clears throat> yes pam plays a very integral role in implementing zero trust uh, we heard you right but i also want to take a key from what charanjit mentioned uh, the approach for a pam so classically when we talk pam we talk about uh, the access controls right so we usually say okay uh, compliance people do it mostly for compliance so maybe i want to take this question uh, forward saying pam on a compliance based approach or a pam on a risk based approach so this time i would like to start from you bala uh, how would you differentiate uh, you being from the services sector how would you differentiate the two 
and then we will come to uh, charanjit from a manufacturing sector how would he differentiate well this is going to be a big uh, one because uh, uh, you know uh, i come from a function called risk and compliance right i mean compliance is also important risk is also important i can't ignore both the pieces but uh, today the approach or the thinking uh, while compliance is important compliance alone is not going to uh, take care of certain things in the previous uh, session uh, when burgess was there uh, there was a question that you know um, if i'm going to comply with these things is that okay i mean it's just a tick in the check box i mean if rbi is going to give you a uh, mandate that all your bfsi should have a pam everybody will implement pam that's it but how is it going to reduce your risk from a compliance risk point of view budget will be approved but today the biggest problem in my opinion what we are also facing with our customers when we talk to them it's a tick in the box uh, and more times we have to educate them we have to tell them that um, the concept of uh, do not focus more on the compliance piece because compliance yes we will take you there but sustenance is your risk but uh, you have a pam yes it's a tick but uh, tomorrow will the pam is going to identify risk in your environment which is going to be uh, playing a very pivotal role in, for you to reduce your risk exposure and improve your uh, uh, you know resiliency i think uh, more from the ceo point of view it could be from a risk management yes is very important but i think uh, this platform i mean uh one of the other reason uh, which i love to talk about this topic is because nalcon is more technical uh, and it's the analyst people who are sitting out and the engineers who are sitting there they need to have the business context of the risk what is this spam used for where is it going is it a blip i mean you can't write an sop for common sense it's very difficult so the risk is very important and they are the guys who actually know what is deviating the ceo doesn't know ceo is at the apex body but the risk management these are the technical guys who have to identify that with the business knowledge so i think both go hand in hand but compliance is a mandate but risk is something which is driven as an as a culture if that is going to happen then i think the value what you get out of the initiative or the strategy is going to be phenomenal i mean that's my take on it chanjit from you yeah so typically compliance uh, mostly all the organizations are doing at their end and uh, either it is due to internal uh, 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 requirement from the board or from the external bodies whatever it is uh, but it is a common unilateral thing which uh, all organizations will uh, do uh, from a risk based uh, approach when we talk about it uh, it provides another flavor uh, of the typical risks which are actually evolving around the organization now what are those risks those risk will be both internal and external risk now you need to categorize those risks how will you categorize those risks with the help of a solution like a pam it will provide you a full discovery of all your critical infrastructure which is there then you need to identify which ones are the higher risk item for you which are the critical infrastructure which are the medium ones and which are the lower ones and accordingly you will uh, you will uh, like to have uh, the toll gates uh, or the barriers uh, so the level of difficulty uh, will increase from low medium to high that's how i visualize that risk <clears throat> so uh, typically it is very easier to explain such kind of thing to the management or board when you say that you're actually applying the risk which is dynamically evolving within the organization as well as outside the organization and you are taking proactive approach uh, with the help of a pam solution uh, sorry ajay uh, uh, charan brought a very important point uh, it just struck me i think i need to tell this also uh i'm sure uh, you know uh, people will say you have to do threat hunting identify anomalies uh, you know how many of you actually identified anomalies i'm surprised because uh, you can't identify anomalies just like that because you have to be constantly monitoring you need to know a pattern right so you don't know what is shifting so we were just discussing and this came up and uh, when charan brought it out i thought i should say this because i keep telling that 
the the security community create patterns if you don't create patterns saying that for example you will do a change in the active directory only on say tuesdays between 9 and 10 pm so anything changes you don't have to identify an anomaly you don't have to uh, you know wait for the sock team to raise a ticket then resolve a group getting into it then assigning it to it you don't have to wait the moment it's going to be on a monday you know for sure it's a p1 why because it did not happen on a tuesday simple create patterns if you don't create patterns anything that deviates from the pattern then you can classify that as anomalies if you you can't see just a blip and see that that's an anomaly no that's not an anomaly there could be so many reasons why something could have blipped so many reasons why something could be shown as a blip so when charan said that it just occurred to me i thought i'll just share that information with you great so this brings me to our next question uh, which is uh, you know next gen capabilities but then before that let, let's define or let's understand what pam typically is used for or known for so we all probably agree that pam is used for Uh, our credential vaulting right so we do credential vaulting into the pam uh, we do mfa for the users who log in uh, passwordless or not knowing the passwords they can log into the various assets uh, devices per se uh, we do session monitoring session recording compliance aspects and then like uh, we talk right now risk based approach where we are talking certain risk analysis behavior analysis these are aspects that you expect or we know pam today uh delivers okay now let's talk about what are the next gen uh, capabilities or um, um, next level capabilities uh, you as practitioners or cso's you uh, you would look for in a pam next gen yeah so, so uh, some of the new things which i would like to see is uh, how well it integrates uh, with the evolving cloud risk because now most of the organizations are moving to the cloud uh when we talk about the cloud we ha we have different platform like iis pass saas uh definitely saas will go out of uh, frame uh, for it, uh, for the time being but uh iis and pass major thing kubernetes is coming microservices is coming how do you address those challenges it ot scada so a lot of machinery <laughs> medical things now happening and uh, believe me in those industry in medical industry or manufacturing no, you don't industry. you don't have to be worried about it because there were so many people so much of talent available <laughs> they will take care of <laughs> no i'm trying to address my problem also <laughs> uh, so uh, so these medical uh, medical people or the uh, manufacturing industry i mean they require a very very simple vision what is actually happening and how to address it at a click of a button can that happen will that integration happen will you simplify the lives of the it people as simple as that so that is i think uh, the take away from the industry is as of now <laughs> you just uh, can uh, you just simplified it too much <laughs> <laughs> so the 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 uh, the ask is too much ajay because what happens is uh, today it's not more uh, on the pam and as i told you it's a black box right so uh, that's the last source where we have to get all the information and if i don't find what i want then it's a dead end for me if i don't get in the pam then i don't know where from i'll get certain things because things could be overwritten things could be wiped off i don't know so very crucial information is what happened when who accessed it what did they do and everything so it's an it's an evolution what uh, uh, the pam as a technology as well as a solution it has evolved if i look at uh, uh, all these years uh, you know it started off as a password repository right way back uh, i mean 15 years back whatever it is then you started uh, looking at role based access management then slowly devolved into multiple things and uh, uh, today when we are looking at next gen requirements and we are talking about uh, uh, you know zero trust and so many uh, complexities the learning curve is very steep and uh, one of the earlier session we had the question you know how fast you know how hands on should be the ciso be to you know get into every technology uh, while pam is one of the most important things any additional features you bring into 
to the CISO, to the security community who's going to manage and has got the responsibility to safeguard the organization, it's a big thing because if you're going to bring in uh, the commands with that cannot be executed or if you're talking about uh, uh, zero trust privileges there or a time-based, uh, uh, you know, kind of commands which is being executed, you know, I will execute, I will, uh, even though Bala has got access to a particular server and privileges, but can he run a wipeout command on an active directory? He cannot. But earlier solution provided that kind of thing because they're checking the role. But today it has to evolve. So how much is enough? I think our CISOs will never be happy with whatever you give. They will always ask more and more. So there's no end to it. But yes, there is a lot of room for it because it has to work hand in hand with other solutions also. How much I can do integrations, everything. So there's a lot on the table. I want to uh, run this question with the audience as well because we have a lot of uh, cybersecurity practitioners. Quite a few people you mentioned you have you have been using PAM. So uh, if we could run a question here, if anybody wants to uh, mention what are the next gen capabilities or uh, sets that they are looking for in the PAM. But while they while they want to answer anything. Well, uh, from a product standpoint, what do you think uh, uh, the product community, I mean, from your point of view, what is that uh, you think you should bring there? Uh, well, actually, to be honest, from the product side of uh, whatever I have seen, um, whether it is our product or some other products, quite a few of these uh, are even today handled right from the OT side of business. So integration with OT, yes. Uh, PAM can do today. PAM can manage uh, OT side of business as well. PAM can also do containers. PAM can also do, you said cloud and you said, oh, let's excuse the SaaS. No need to excuse the SaaS. Uh, we, PAM can manage the SaaS applications also very much uh, even today. You mentioned containers. Yes, containerization. Yes, very much possible. Application to application uh, communication or key management, right? We today do more from a, you know, what we know that the likes of AWS, Azure, GCP, they have their own key management stuff. But then the challenge added there is, if you have built an application for Azure and you use the key management in Azure, if you port the application to AWS, it wouldn't work because you're using that native key management. You have to rewrite all over again. So yes, we have centralized or TAM can provide you the centralized key management capability. So irrespective whether you deploy the application in Azure or AWS, it works. Absolutely no problem. Uh, it can also do ephemeral access if we understand ephemeral access, which is like the tokenization. So one time, single time use tokens, uh, that's available today as well. I think all of these are right available within the kind of TAM solutions that you see in the industry. So uh, why some of you, if you want to answer this question, maybe uh, you also tell if some of these things you have used or would uh, like to use or would like to see. Any answers from the audience? Yeah, one more. yeah um, on the product side, um, one observation that we have is offboarding, right? So everybody does onboarding seamless, right? The main, the real world that, that when you go off boarding, that has to be improved a lot because that's when the, you know. Number one question from a CISO, always he will ask, what about off boarding? So from a product standpoint, yes, uh, I think uh, these products handle off boarding very well. Uh, typically they integrate with your directory services. So if you are using a user from your directory, you remove the user from the directory, the next second he wouldn't be having access to any of these devices, servers, whatever. Yeah, um, just uh, the real challenge, right? So privacy comes in now, the moment, you know, the moment we do offboarding, the footprints are everywhere. And that area is not well seamlessly integrated. So you can offload in the Active Directory what happens, the footprint that is spreading across application and then the privacy kicks in and like, now you offboarded on the Active Directory, you can't track uh, where the data is, you know, seeded everywhere because you lost the the primary key kind of logic, right? And and that's when the interop cleaning across the board is important as a feedback. No, uh, well, we can discuss in detail offline, but yes, products today, 
whatever I know of, uh, maybe not all products, but yes, products today are capable of offboarding across uh, the uh, technology platform that you Can have. I add to that? So, one of the uh, problems today uh, people face is your application dependency mapping, right? So, today Bala is there, he accesses a particular application. Bala leaves the company, Sharon joins it, he accesses. Sharon leaves the he joins, then accesses. And uh, if you go back to the audit records, you will see Bala, Sharan, and Ajay. But the question is, if the fourth person comes, will he know what access Ajay is supposed to have? And is he what is that what he is having? That is something no solution in the world can give you on the platter. That depends on your governance. So what happens is, in your review, in your governance, how many times some people have accessed why they have accessed, because for every access, yes, obviously you need a change, which has been approved, right? So that is one thing. So when we are looking at the chain, and then we decide that, okay, now Bala can continue to have the same access. Charan, I don't see you're not accessing this for more than three months, so I think we revoke your credentials. So this operating is something which is... a uh, Today, which is managing Excel sheets, right? So where we map and we, we take it up. But there are solutions, which I mean, next gen PAM, which are bringing out the dependency mapping also, where you are able to see that this is what it is and you know that this person had access to this, therefore I need to revoke there also. So that is obviously, that's one of the things which is coming up and feedbacks like this are very important. I mean, the more the feedbacks comes in, then inputs goes into the OEM and then they look into it and they give a, they make an upgrade or feature to it. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, yeah. That's already there, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, I have a question. Uh, uh, how uh, mature are we for the rule changes uh, within the PAM products that we have, like within com organization rule changes, are we mature enough in the products that we are able to handle that? Very much yes, meaning roles are mapped to their uh, profiles and uh, roles will have mapping to access. So very easy, not just PAM, I think even identity access management tools, access management tools also have those kinds of capabilities meaning their privileges inside those applications can also be changed based on role change. Because people will obviously move up the ladder and obviously their uh, privileges will uh, uh, increase inside that. A classic requirement of typical ERPs and all that stuff, yeah, very, very much. There. And uh, it is not only limited to just the roles because the it is now bringing more granularity into the task. Earlier it was a role, a role used to have say 15 tasks if I assign you the role, you are privileged to execute all the 15 tasks. But today, with the same role for you versus Sajay, I can give you four tasks in that and I can assign him eight tasks for it. So that's the kind of granularity control which we can bring in today. Okay, now let's move towards the uh, privilege side of it or uh, the least privilege that we want to talk about. But before that, let's try and understand. Meaning, we talked about PAM and whatever capabilities earlier we talked about, most of them revolve around the access part of it. But once the access is there, uh, then it is the privileges which are predefined, right? So we say privilege accounts are always on and always available, right? Because accounts have been defined. Accounts were defined earlier in that. So accounts are always on, always available. So uh, do you agree with this aspect and what risk does this bring? Yeah, so giving default access uh, to a person and uh, not monitoring his activities uh, may lead to serious incidents. That's what I will say uh, on a practical approach. Uh, I definitely do not agree with that and uh, the best thing is that even if you are giving the access to your system administrators on a privileged uh, infrastructure, uh, you need to ensure some baseline access has to be given, the minimum, bare minimum access, uh, which that person uh, uh, can uh, f do fulfill his daily operational activities. That is the number one criteria. 
After that, if there are any additional privileges, as Bala was mentioning on the fine-grained uh, activities or uh, the rules which have to be enabled, those fine-grained rules have to be enabled on stage basis based on business requirements. So there has to be adequate business requirement why he requires the additional privilege. If that is being mentioned explicitly, it can go via workflow to his manager or supervisor, he can approve it on the fly, he will get the access. So that's the best benefit. You will also get to know the change management process. The actual change management which is happening within the organization, how your team is working and how the approvals are being given. This will also fulfill your auditory requirement, etc. So this is how the practical way to work uh, with solutions like PAM will evolve for a period of time. Bala, you want to add something? Uh, this actually unfortunately reminds me of an incident which happened uh, in my friend's company where we got an SOS call and uh, one of the employees, uh, he was not very happy with the management. He just walked in, logged into AD, wiped off completely, logged off, went off. There is absolutely nothing and every single shit works basis that and uh, he is wiped out completely and uh, backup nahi hai, backup are gone. So what do we do? So they have absolutely no clue at all. They, I mean nobody is prepared for a kind of an insider risk and I am not saying that insider risk is a huge risk but today yes, uh, we have heard about uh, cases uh, abroad where people were recruited who are part of the, I mean, uh, who are employees in the organization were asked to do certain things because they were being bribed and they were doing it. I mean, uh, it's something from a CISO point of view, you know, while I have to deal with external risk, now I have to deal with internal risk. Now when we are talking about uh, these kind of things, privileges, uh, it's really a scary thing because uh, why do I need to do frequent changes is one question. Two, uh, if at all I have to do, do I have visibility as to why this is being done? Is it being done by the authorized people? Uh, three, uh, bifurcate uh, uh, maker checker. You know, uh, that is, I mean, I'm talking uh, olden day spam, you know, because we couldn't do it. I mean, I don't know how many of you know that in the... ATM box, you know, which still runs your age-old uh, operating system, you can't enable your uh, second factor or anything because it doesn't support it. So what do you do? So it's a 14 character password, two people go and change the, uh, you know, login, seven characters I know and the seven will, he will be knowing. So that's the kind of process uh, banking industry is involved, Indian Jugad, this is what we do. So we are good at it and uh, the common sense uh, has evolved uh, big time to address these things. But if you ask me as a feature from a technology standpoint, definitely because earlier I had a plethora of uh, uh, privileges to execute, uh, then it became to just enough privileges, then it went to uh, zero uh, privileges. Now we are talking about on-demand privileges. So it's a, it's a, it's an evolution by itself and the industry needs it. I mean, uh, it's a very important piece and if it use it appropriately, I think it's going to be a huge game changer. Great. So, uh, two points uh, from your, uh, from this uh, aspect. You mentioned about the risks uh, with the inherent um, accounts uh, which will have, you can have insider risk or you could have let's say even malwares or ransomwares who typically pick on this privileges because at the end of the day the server doesn't know or the device doesn't know where the connection is coming from, whether it is coming from a user or from a malware or whatever, right? It gets a right credential, it will definitely uh, give the access. So yes, uh, definitely big risk reduction uh, will happen. Uh, the other part is as you mentioned, just in time privileges, you mentioned about least privileges. So if I say, and maybe it could be a short answer, if I say, if your PAM can help you implement this least privilege or just in time privilege mechanism, which is post logon, okay, while classic PAM we all talked about, just pre-logon just gives you access. 
if this can help would it reduce uh, your risk significantly i am using the term significantly maybe no definitely it's a it's a huge uh, 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 what to say uh, control for the CISO community because uh, this is definitely will bring in visibility as to what is happening. One, two, uh, it brings accountability also because uh, it brings transparency and accountability because if I'm going to live it, okay, this person has got it and he's executing it, I need to figure out from my dashboard, okay, what has happened there. But here, how many times this has happened and how many times it has gone and somebody knows that, okay, there's a two different people are being involved in the maker and checker. And the moment it's going to happen, why did you do it? The moment they know that, ask a question, why? Then they have to think, okay, I have to justify this. So they will think twice before they actually do certain things. So that's something which is, uh, you know, today when we talk about risk, it is probability to impact. While impact is going to remain the same, I'm going to reduce the effect of probability as much as possible. So if I'm able to reduce the probability by another 10%, I will do it because that's going to be one more toll gate uh, for the, uh, you know, for the attacker to cross. So that's something which is very welcome. And Charanjit, uh, since you mentioned workflow for privileges, while we know workflow for uh, access, but you mentioned workflow for privileges, does workflow for privileges also reduce the uh, risk, inherent risk? Definitely, uh, because uh, as soon as the workflow will evolve, uh, as an immediate manager, manager will question uh, what kind of change it is, where are you doing it, what will be the impact, uh, uh, and how are you doing it? Uh, have you analyzed or tested it out earlier in the test environment? Uh, is it been ratified? Uh, is it a recommended solution from the OEM if you're fixing a patch, etc.? So all those things will be there and uh, he need to answer those things before his supervisor gives him the access. So yes, that's its, a fail-proof mechanism for the change ma uh, management and a big uh, enabler for the business also, I would say. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Final question from my side. Uh, what kind of data points, since you mentioned dashboard, right? So uh, what kind of data points would you as a CISO, would you expect uh, PAM to provide to help you in building your dashboard, a CISO dashboard, or let's say a dashboard for presenting to the board? See, this is one thing which I've always seen with uh, most of the solutions. Uh, you know, uh, I keep uh, talking with my partners, my OEM, a uh, lot because uh, uh, it's always a symbiotic effect, you know. They also push me to think differently. I also push them to think differently. And today, if you look at uh, metrics, it is not a dashboard which I defined three years back, and it's the same dashboard I'm following it, I'm monitoring it. There's something wrong, because maybe you've addressed the risk already. Okay, you have a control and you already monitored and kept it, but what are the blips? As I told you before, the patterns, create a pattern, deviations, monitor that. Now, the attack vectors and the attack groups are ever-changing, the way they are, somebody is going to look at. Now, we have got something as evil proxy, multi-factor authentication could be bypassed. How are you geared up for that? I mean, do we see anything kind of uh, blips in that? So, is there an opportunity for that? So, the dashboard customization and how I can, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, uh, draw a trend upon it with respect to a particular service or a port or a server or to a geo because I may have global data centers. So is it focused on geo? It's focused on a person based only because whenever Bala does it, that's a problem. That's something that's a blip. Then that's a correlation which we'll have to figure it out. So the ask is too much. But uh, if the OEM is able to give us a, a platform where we can customize fields, where we can bring it down because Every dashboard can change so dynamically and if they're going to bring more real-time dashboards which we are able to circulate and share as a widget or something like that, I think uh, that will be phenomenal for us. Great. Sharanjit, any final points from you? Yeah, so on the dashboard, uh, a CISO would like to know what are the normal risks or violations which he is getting within his environment. Uh, so entire single frame, single console spectrum, he should be able to see. Uh, if it is a um, MNC organization, he can say 
multiple countries, uh, if he was a genuine user or not, did he access it? When did he access it? Was it during the business hours or was it during the approved hours? Or was it that he worked out of the hours and then tried to do something uh, which might lead to downtime in production or uh, later on some major security incident within the organization? So those are the violations uh, which CISO will like to see. Also, uh, some third party intel with respect to uh, key management uh, or uh, uh, the critical resources ID being compromised if that kind of threat intel the dashboard can give maybe an immediate action can be taken then and there to avoid the major impact for the organization. That's Great. what I will say. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, I know we are out of time, but just in case anybody has questions, we can probably take a couple of questions here. We have, we have one question here and maybe we'll take another next question here. Yeah. Uh, we are talking about PAM and ZT in general, right? So one of the major challenges in the industry we face is identifying the right solution uh, because uh, even if you look at the Zero Trust, uh, NIST has come with one architecture, SDP has another architecture and many of the organizations are talking about the outbound tunnel going from the gateway which is again another architecture, right? Which is where most of the companies are today again. So how do you identify the right architecture, right organization when it comes to PAM and ZD? Uh, there is no uh, single answer to this. I mean, one answer doesn't fit anything. Um, it's a it's a mix and match. It's a point in time decision what somebody is going to take. So uh, there are multiple approaches what you can uh, look into it. Either you can group your high critical assets into a group, and that could be one zone. Uh, micro segmentation with PAM is going to be a very good uh, combinations you know, which is going to help on that uh, segmentation or micro segmentation. And um, you can group uh, uh, Azure or AWS separately. Uh, see, the challenge is something different. It is not about what is not available, right? It is about what is that you can make use of best with the available ones. So the the person who is going to sell the solution may not even have thought about it. Because it is not their problem to solve, it is our problem, right? Because we are dealing with it. Because we don't do it, that's a risk, the questions come to us. So we need to handle that. So we need to divide and rule. That's the that's easiest thing which we can start with. Don't, don't try to uh, achieve perfection on day one. Impossible. Impossible. You cannot address that. Focus on your critical ones, then medium, then low. Scale it up. Have an action plan, review it periodically because unless you do this on a, on a periodical basis, today you may not have a solution, but tomorrow something may come up. So you have to keep updated on that piece also. So there's no one answer to it, but yes. Okay, thank you. Second question. I hope I was able to. There was a second question here. Yeah. closer. Hello. Okay. <laughs> so this is regarding the user onboarding we do in PAM. So uh, for example, if a user is onboarded and, and requesting multiple times and different requests to uh, make the permission changes or provide more permissions. So how you, how we can balance between the zero trust and, and ease of operation in such cases? You mind if I take that question? Because being on the product side, probably I can answer it better. So. <clears throat> Ease of operations, very much understood uh, and uh, so there are two aspects. One obviously is the access. So access is not something uh, which you will have too much things to debate about. If you will get access to certain servers, you get access to certain servers. You cannot just simply request for access for some other server and somebody will grant you. It's more about the privileges that you can do on those servers, right? So there, typically solutions today, uh, number one as I said, uh, um, solutions today can give you least privilege. So while you log in, you have least privileges, but then you can elevate your privileges to deliver certain, let's say, tasks or commands or whatever. There could be certain bucket of commands which where you could request for approvals and only after that those uh, um, um, tasks can be performed. And there could be certain bucket of commands 
which come what may you will never be able to do something like bala mentioned rm minus rf so you should should not be ever able to do it so those kinds of things will we can be bucketed so it will definitely ease out so you just elevate for all your routine stuff request for critical stuff and other very dangerous stuff you don't do at all so just to add to what uh, jay said today you have solutions pam solutions which can ensure that that you can log in only from a particular laptop and only from a particular subnet so that extent is possible so zero trust from a identity point of view from a device point of view and resource point of Actions view point is covered so earlier pam was focused more only on the identity part it was not more focused on the on the device part of it now yes next gen pams are looking it yes so um continuation to that like like you mentioned just in time right so for example we are starting with the least privileges and then requesting for just in time privileges but do you think that will again increase the time of the uh, time and and operation operation uh, for that because once he requested then it will go to manager for approval and then then again the cycle will begin we can discuss it offline but yeah as, as such it will not because as i said routine task you will only elevate you don't need to ask for approval routine stuff only critical stuff you want to uh, request for access okay it it wouldn't okay i think we are already out of time thank you so much for uh, joining this session and i thank the panelists also so much thank you sir and thank you again thank you